You know, man, it's funny. Um, I've been thinking about the Knicks lately, and I'm in no way am I going there. Um, I'm not comparing the Knicks to the Yankees, but like, I, I, it's funny because last year, around a pretty similar time, maybe a yeah, around a pretty similar time, I was doing the same thing where I got tired of this team because they keep losing, and it just looks like the same old, same old. And I start trying to transition half of my brain to basketball season while I'm still, the other half of my brain is still focused on baseball. And just because it's like I'm starting to lose interest. I'm starting to lose interest in this team. It's not becoming a hobby to watch them and talk about them anymore. Um, you know what? That sounded a little too deep. <laughs> it's not becoming... It's not as fun as it was. It's still fun. It's not as fun right now to watch this team and talk about them and, and all that. Um, and now I'm starting to like... When you have to start thinking about the Knicks, things must be really bad. I guess that's where I'm going. <laughs> but, um, and, and I know. It, it's, all about, it's all about expectations, right? It's funny how that works. It's all about expectations. And things are not looking good for the New York Yankees. And we are... Who are we? Uh, going to talk about that in this one. Episode 396 of BD4. I'm your host, RJ. Let's get to it. This is RJ Carbone, and you're listening to BD4. He shook out the world again. Anthony for three. And showing some dexterity as well with the left hand. And it's on its way! There it goes! And the Yankees are going for the win! Let's go! Off the window! Unbelievable! The first punch he threw! under! Got it! What a tense left! Wow, this team sucks. Um, it's not looking good. Um, yeah, I don't know how much I'm going to have to add. I don't know how much I have to say. Uh, we are going to go through the series, do a quick little recap of each game, give some thoughts on it, but for the majority of this episode, we uh, are going to have... A guest on the show. We already had a guest on the show earlier today. So I'm going to play that a little bit later on in the show. We had uh, Greg from Yankee Crazy Podcast join us earlier today. And by earlier today, I mean Sunday, August 14th. Um, as you are listening to this, it's um, the earliest. It is Monday the 15th. But yeah, this episode, we're going to have Greg join us and talk about the state of the Yankees. So just keep in mind when we get to that part, that conversation is taking place after the second game of this three-game set. Not like it matters. Um, we joked about it because it was kind of our first time on the show together. It's like our first time talking on a show in a more pessimistic way. Because I feel like every time I've been on his show, Yankee Crazy Podcast, um, and every time he's been on here, BD4, it's always been in a positive manner because it's like preseason or it's maybe right before the playoffs begin, you know? So this was a little different. This was mid-season. Uh, he joined us here August 14th in the midst of a pretty brutal stretch so we're going to get to that. But um, if you are new here to the podcast, hello. Welcome to BD4. I'm your host, RJ Carbone. You are listening to episode 396 of BD4, where there's no better way to get your Yankees and Knicks analysis. We also do MMA now, too. Yanks every series, Knicks every game, MMA on weekends. 
Um, got to change that last part because we don't do MMA as much. Should just say occasionally MMA. <laughs> but yeah, find us on Apple Podcasts. Give us a five-star rating and review. Um, you can find us and listen to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, uh, Google Podcasts, Anchor, many other listening pla- platforms. You can watch the podcast. The video format is on Spotify and YouTube. And of course, guys, if you want to follow me on social media, be sure to do that. Facebook, Instagram, you know where to go to get my information there. And, um, yeah, I also write a blog. Go to bd4blog.com, which has everything you need. This is bad, and we're going to talk about it right now. Um, I'm not going to bullshit, not going to fuck around. Let's just get right into the thick of things. The Yankees are struggling this season. Um, I'm just going to say this season now because it's not even like, like this, this is a 40 game stretch. That's not a stretch. It's, it's, it's almost, you know, a month worth of games in baseball is about 25 games. So we're coming up on two months full of disappointment. Um, so once we get to that, I'm just going to start calling it a pretty down season, you know? expectations guys um yeah th- th- this this has been bad the uh, episode 396 yank socks and more with greg gill again we will have greg from yankee crazy podcast join us later in the show but the yankees keep on losing because that's what they do i don't remember the last series they won kansas city what was that three weeks ago first game of this set took an extra innings loss a three to two loss against the Red Sox. Um, I guess it started pretty optimistically. <laughs> Top of the first inning, Anthony Rizzo. Finally looking better. First game back, the bat speed was very slow. You thought the back injury was bothering him. But Anthony Rizzo on the top of the first inning of this game picks up an RBI double. It's one nothing. Then you get Judge in the top of the third with his 46th home run of the season Jesus Christ 2 nothing Yankees after the third but that was it we went downhill from there bottom of the fourth JD Martinez broken uh, broken bat single it's 2-1 Boston and then you got to the bottom of the ninth basically long story short the same old same old with Clay Holmes Clay Holmes blows it again the game is tied at two. He gets pulled for, I think, Peralta. I wasn't watching this game um, until, I, until I got home. And I got home in the 10th, um, just in time for Tommy Pham's bottom of the 10th inning RBI base hit to walk it off. 3-2, um, to two, the Red Sox win. So, that was nice. The Bats did nothing. Um, just like they've been doing nothing pretty much all series they did nothing um two runs only on on nine hits um two extra base hits three walks eight strikeouts one double play hit into one for ten with with runners in scoring position and ten men left on base uh jose trevino had two hits to lead the team then you had a bunch of guys with one hit dj had a one for five night judge was one for two the home run two walks in there uh, Rizzo was one for five with the RBI double. Um, Donaldson was one for four. He had a walk and two strikeouts. Glaber was 0 for five. An awful strikeout in the ninth inning with another terrible at bat in the clutch. We call him clutch all the time. We might have to stop calling him that because he has been pretty brutal in the clutch lately. Benintendi was one for four. Gotta tell you, I am not impressed with Andrew Benintendi, man. Not impressed at all with his Yankees tenure so far. I know it's early for him, but it's it's getting late early as well. He's got to start fucking picking it up. These 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 one hit games where he's where he's got fans going on. Oh, maybe this is it. That's the problem. He was supposed to come here and actually hit. He's not hitting. He's striking out at least once a game. I don't know what the fuck. How, how, where did that come from? Having a problem right now with Ben and Tandy. It's bothering me. Um, thank God he's only a rental. IKF was one for four. Um, 
I don't know if we're going to get to him in a second. So I'll just say it here. Take a sip real quick. I am. Um, I'm ready. At this point of the season. And I know it's a bad time because he had a pretty big second game. Which we're going to talk about in two seconds. But I'm ready. Um. I have no problem. I, I'm not an anti IKF guy. You all, you all know I'm actually pretty, pretty for IKF. I think it's a decent baseball player. Um, I don't think his shortstop defense is very good. I think that's a problem. Um, but I do think as a as a hitter at the bottom third of the lineup, he's done a decent job. He's gonna slap singles, and a lot of the times he's gonna slap singles with the guy in front, guy on base. And he's pretty good at that. He's like a 320, 330 hitter with a runner in scoring position. So that doesn't get talked about enough. And I think he's doing a very good job of that. Um, you need some contact in this lineup. He provides that. Now, that said, his best attribute is a 270 average. Okay? It's not a slugging. He doesn't do that. It's not, you know, he doesn't get on base a ton. He doesn't walk. He doesn't play great deep. So his, his only really decent attribute is his 270 average. I'm ready to go with Peraza. I think IKF could be a great bat off the bench. Now, you know, ideally, I would love to have IKF slide over to third base and have Donaldson you know, clean off the garbage on the bench and Peraza play shortstop for this team. But, you know... I don't think they're, they're, they're Donaldson's getting paid twenty five million. The guy sucks ass, but they're going to keep him there. I'm ready. I and we're going to talk about the the young prospects and, and young stars and stuff in a second because there's a whole thing I want to talk about. Um, Hicks was one for four. <laughs> uh, pitching wise, the Yankees were okay in the first game. Uh, Domingo Herman they actually pitched well all series. Domingo won six innings, um, five hits allowed. One run, two walks, four strikeouts, no home runs. I mean, I still, if you're asking me who I want as the number five starter from now until the rest of the regular season, I would still prefer Clark Schmidt. Um, but I can't hate on Domingo right now. He's been pretty good, man. I give him credit. You know, after his first start back, which was... By the way, the stupidest thing Aaron Boone could have done um, in a season where he does many stupid things starts him against Scherzer against that Mets game, and he was terrible. But after that, good. Two runs, two runs, one run, one run. And at least five innings pitch in, in the last three outings. So he's been good. I can't complain. Um, the bullpen... In the first game of the set, it was F. Ross, Chapman, Holmes, Trevino. One second here. And here we go. Sorry. Froze up on me. Um, yeah, I mean, F. Ross was 1 2 3. Chapman was 1 2 3 with a couple of strikeouts. Clay Holmes blew the fifth save of the season for him. Peralta was good. Trevino blew the lead the second time with the tie. Um, but let's talk about let, let's talk about the closer role because um, that's kind of concerning. Clay Holmes. I mean, we kind of talked about it too last time out. It's bad. <laughs> like it, it, it's getting to a point. It's got to a point now where I definitely understand people who want him out of the closer role. Actually, I'm one of those people. I don't want him there anymore. The thing that differs me from everybody else is I don't think that just means you throw Chapman back there. And I know Chapman's pitched better. A lot better of late. But I, I, I've said it before. I'm never going to trust Aroldis Chapman again. I, 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 mean, I think you should have went Ron Marinaccio for closer, but obviously he's got to spend a few more days down in AAA now because <laughs> options. Um, but maybe you, you go Efros. He looked good in the second game. 
which is the game we're talking about. No. He looked at the first. Yeah, he looked good in the second game. We're talking about the first game. <laughs> Sorry. I'm all fucked up right now. Um, yeah, no, I don't think you can go Clay Holmes anymore. At least in the meantime. Get him the fuck out of that spot. I don't want him closing a game. He can't throw a strike anymore. He hits a batter every time he comes in. There's at least one runner on base every time he comes in. He has not had a 1-2-3 since the first Fenway series of the season, um, which was a little later in the year. But still, it's been a while. Um, I, I, I have no trust in him anymore. I have no trust. Maybe uh, I, I, I don't want it to be him. Um, it's hard because their bullpen's not that good. <laughs> so I don't know many options. Uh, but it's bad. He can't be there anymore. No control, no command of that sinker. He had one decent outing lately where his slider looked better than everything else. He was going slider heavy. But I don't want him touching the ball anymore in the ninth. Um, and I think that was it from the first game. <clears throat> Excuse me. That was it. The Yankees lost. Uh, they won the second game of the set. 3-2. to two. Congrats. Yeah. Um, good win. They they were down early. After four innings, it was 2 nothing Boston. From a hit by pitch and a sack fly, Montas did not have a rhythm. But, get some run support in the top of the fifth. When Isaiah Connor Falefa, of course, hits a home run. If you bet on that, you're probably getting tons of money. I mean, uh, fuck, I can't even imagine the odds on that. Uh, IKF slops a homer over the monster. It's 2 2. And then, yeah, this was the IKF game. Top of the ninth, a rare. Bunt for the Yankees. A safety squeeze from IKF. Getting the lead runner home. It's 3-2 Yankees. And they win it from there. Um, F. Ross closes it out. The bats, pretty bad again though. Three runs on six hits. Uh, two extra base hits. Five walks. 11 strikeouts. One double play hit into. Two for five in scoring position. Seven left on base as a team. But yeah, IKF had three hits. The bunt, the homer. Three RBIs and a nice play at second base late in the game. Donaldson, Benintendi, and Trevino had a hit at each. Donaldson had a walk and two strikeouts. Again, Benintendi had a walk, a double, and he made an excellent diving catch in the middle of this game, like in the bottom of the sixth, I believe it was. Um, great play from left field. Trevino slapped a base hit in this one. He also made an excellent play late. Uh, a play that Gary Sanchez does not even think about getting off his ass there. So, some good defense in this game, at least. Montas was okay. Five innings, five hits, two runs, two walks, four strikeouts, and no home runs allowed. So, he wasn't great, but he was a lot better than he was the first time he pitched with the Yankees. Uh, he was so-so. You know, I'm still not impressed yet with him. I, I don't see why I should be um, so far, but... I do like his stuff. He's a hard thrower. Um, ground ball pitcher, sinker, splitter. So we'll, we'll see where it goes with him. The bullpen. It was Litke, Trevino, Chapman, and Efros. Chapman stays hot. Makes a smart play himself. Um, and that pickoff. Efros, you know, got a little shaky there. But he gets the, gets the, uh, gets the save. And his energy after, he was just going crazy with it. Love it. Um, and, and the Yankees won. So that, that was their rare bonus win, uh, which don't come around often these days. And then the third game of the set. Uh, Jesus. <laughs> There's nothing to recap, man. The Yankees had two hits. Tyone pitched well. He won seven innings, three runs. That's good. And again, like I'm saying, uh, the only positive lately for this Yankees team is their starting pitching is starting to turn it around. Um, guys are going deep into games and, and they're limiting runs. So that's good. But other than that, awful, very bad. Um, and say what you want about the K-Rod podcast if you listen tonight. But A-Rod, man, and you can hate him all you want, but A-Rod is always on the money. 
when it comes to baseball stuff. He's, he's got a genius baseball mind. And he was, towards the end of this game, you know, pretty much ripping Cashman. And he was 110% on point with everything he was saying. When it came to Cashman and his analytics and the prospects and the deadline, bringing up the Yankees roster construct and their philosophy, talking about how strikeouts shouldn't be meaningless. Like he was on the money, brought, brought, up, uh, brought up Castillo, prospect, all that stuff. He was nailing it. He's literally everything I've been saying, you've probably been saying about this team. A-Rob was spitting the facts. Um... And he's right, man. He's so right. It's it's just the same thing, you know. Hal wants to sell tickets. Cashman wants to always go for plan B. It's just, it's never all that it takes to win, right? It's always, let's just try to do enough because we can get away with that. Or we think we can get away with that. We think we're smarter than everybody else. But it's the same thing. It's the same thing. The rotation always regresses back to being... Eh, every year. The lineup is the same exact thing every single year. And I don't know why all of you continue to not see it consistently. Like, they're always the same thing. They're always this all or nothing, home run or miss lineup. You know, where not many guys contribute consistently enough. The only consistent guys are DJ. He's been fine. Uh, obviously, Aaron Judge is great. Although he can't hit Boston, can't hit Houston, so that's pissing me off lately. Um, but I mean, the entire damn lineup, other than DJ Judge, Trevino's been solid, and IKF is so-so. But really, the entire damn lineup outside those two or three or three or four guys, not cutting it, not holding their weight. I mean, Rizzo is, eh, he's so-so. But Torres, disgusting. He's a flop. I'm done with Torres. Hicks shouldn't even be in the majors. He's a fourth, fifth outfielder at best, and I've been saying that since 2017. God damn it. Donaldson should be playing 18 holes right now. He should not be in the big leagues. Tim LaCastro should never even be a thought on a team like the New York Yankees, okay? Why is he on their roster? A glorified pinch runner. Like, the fact that he's even... I can't. I can't. Andahar. I guess he's been okay, but he's he's not the guy anymore, man. It's over. You're living off nostalgia if you're waiting for him to be the guy. But I'm, I'm just tired. Like, there's still... You're still hearing excuses. Like, before the All-Star break... Do you remember every Yankees fan was like, we desperately need an all-star break. This team's been slumping. They need it. And now, after the all-star break, all you hear is, we've been so bad since the all-star break. It's like, no, you haven't. They've been bad since the middle of June. Like, you're just like, these guys have short-term rent. You guys think, watch, pay attention. This team's been like this for a while. And I'm tired of hearing, like, it's it, it injuries. Oh, we need guys to come back. Dude, we need keep we Every year it's the same thing. We need guys coming back. We need Rizzo. We need Stanton. We need Severino. We miss Carpenter. Here's an idea, okay? So we don't have to go through this injury crap every year. Here's an idea. Instead of building your entire damn roster around older players and injury-prone players... Do what literally every other top-notch team does and start getting a little younger. It's a young man's game now. I'm tired of looking around baseball and seeing all these other young, exciting, athletic superstars take over baseball and the Yankees not have one of them. Not one. Acuna. Tatis. Or... He's probably the worst example at the moment. Let's not talk about him. Uh, Machado, Austin Riley in, in Atlanta. Uh, Juan Soto in San Diego. That that Jazz Chisholm guy in Miami. McClanahan. Uh, Manoa. Talk about Cashman pitching products. <laughs> um, 
Alvarez in Houston. Wander Franco in Tampa Bay, who comes to town next. Luis Robert, uh, Bo Bichette and Guerrero in Toronto. I mean, these guys are all young, on the rise. Like, who can you pick out on the Yankees like that? Who's their guy? You want to know who? Their guy is a 30-year-old upcoming free agent that they should have paid years ago, and they didn't. So now he's probably going to leave them this winter because he sees what's going on. That's who their guy is. Like, the Yankees have zero of that. They have zero guys on this roster currently who are both young and and on the rise. They don't have a single young blooming superstar on the rise on this roster. We thought that was going to be Glaber Torres. It's not exactly him. It could be Peraza. But guess what? We don't know that because we don't have him up here right now. Why? Because they're so focused on service time. They're focused on service time. And I'm not even sure after August 18th, which I believe is the date, that he's going to be on this team. Because we're so, so, so complacent in everything. We're so fine and we we just expect guys to turn around. We just stick with them for far too long. There is no more perform or get the hell out of here. That doesn't exist. They stick with guys. The Yankees do now. So I expect Donald. Let me look. They stuck with Gallo for a year and a half. Donaldson's going to be here. Like, they don't... Peraza's rotten in AAA. Cabrera's in AAA. Volpe is in AAA. These pitchers that we have are in AAA. None of them are with his roster right now because they're worried about service time. They don't give a fuck about this team winning a World Series as much as they should. Service time. Options. 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 Why do you think Marinaccio and Schmidt are down there? Options. Because they're afraid to DFK... To DF... <laughs> Let's cut that out. They're afraid to DFA... Guys like Licky, who's a journeyman. A guy like Abreu, who every other team is who didn't want when he was DFA'd by the KC Royals. Let's go. Let's be real. Cut the shit. Get your act together. One of the more frustrating things about being a Yankees fan is you know this team has the resources to be so much better than they are. And not to act spoiled. I get it. This team is very good when you look at the record. But a lot of that is from earlier in the season. And very good doesn't win a championship we expect a world series not to be very good we're not like the mets they're celebrating their best record in the nl because they're playing happy to be here the yankees fans know happy to be here is not what the expectation is the expectation for the yankees fans is to see a world series championship and when we've seen this team consistently do the same thing year after year win 100 games or so and lose in the playoffs it's kind of hard to see this pattern this season, and not think of the, the recent seasons. Like, it's kind of hard to stay optimistic when we're seeing what's going on. 23 and 27 in their last 40 games. No. 50 games. So it is two months. Yeah, it's bad. It's bad. Let's get to it, guys. Let's get to the episode with Greg and I, or the, the second part of this episode where Greg and I talk Yankees. First, we are going to wrap it up with the NYY, NYK, MMA question of the day for episode 396. All right, so let's get to it. For this episode, our NYY, NYK, MMA question of the day, episode 396, is what year was the Yankees' regular season record versus their division in 2009? Sorry, I said that wrong. Let me say that again. What was the Yankees' regular season record versus the division in 09? What was the Yankees' regular season record versus their division in 2009? All right, let me know the answer wherever you can reach me. If you get the answer correct, I'll give you a shout out. If you don't get it correct, but you at least attempt to guess the answer, I'll let you know what it is in the next episode. What was the Yankees' regular season record versus their division in 2009? All right. All right, guys. Um, that's it for this show, for, for this part of the show. 
We're going to get to the second half of the show now where Greg Gill from Yankee Crazy Podcast. Go check out that podcast. It's unbelievable. Um, he'll do an episode, you know, once every five years. Um, uh, <laughs> no, he, he joined us. He joins us in the second half of the show. So we're going to get to that right now. Um, and uh, I, I hope you guys enjoy it. So Greg and I discuss the state of the team, what to expect going forward. And uh, yeah, that's that. So guys, let's get to that part of the show right now. All right, so if you guys want to follow me on social media, I'm on Facebook, RJ Carbone, and I'm also on Instagram, at Rob J Carbone. That's Facebook, RJ Carbone, and on Instagram, I'm at Rob J Carbone. So BD4 is on so many different platforms now. You can listen to the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and plenty other listening platforms. You can also watch the podcast on YouTube and Spotify. And if you do listen to us on Apple Podcasts, be sure to give us a five-star rating and review as we are currently a five-star podcast and would love to keep it that way. And if you watch the podcast on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to the BD4 YouTube channel. Download, listen, watch, share it, do all of that stuff to help us grow. It's like, it's, it's like I'm guy. interviewing. Um, it's like one of the Yankees analytics department that want to remain anonymous. <laughs> wow, this well, is crazy. I'm like in full light. This has to be some sort of filter or something. It's all good. It's only gonna be. We can just do audio only if it, ma- it don't matter. Let me see. Here, let me just see something. If it's the. Oh wait. There, there we go. How did that yeah, just happen? Perfect. Wait. Now what? There we go. That's perfect. A little bit better. A little bit better. Oh, the further I go back. Here, let me see. If I move this forward. There we go. Wow. That's that's really weird still, but okay. We can work with this. Oh. Fine. It's fine. Let's see. No. None. Perfect. Oh, those are the backgrounds. <laughs> there you go. I <laughs> that's, that's a little weird. Okay. Um, all right. I'll try and be up forward like this. Mm, yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. There we go. That's a little bit better. A little Perfect. better lighting Perfect. instead of that. Um, I could have the voice changer and I could be like, I'm part of the Yankees analytics that's, department. That's and I really set work. the lineups and yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm speaking out against it anonymously. Um, fucking, uh, Leslie. <laughs> yes. Yes. Basically, if we could find him and get him on. <laughs> Dude. What's up, man? How we doing? Oh, man. What isn't up? Um, just lots going on trying to, you know, been so crazy busy. I've been trying to fit in uh, watching games. And um, luckily last night, uh, I just got back to see IKF. The, I saw the replay of him bunting and <laughs> scoring that run. And that was that was really great to see because, I, I, man, I tell you, the Yankees go down. My, I, I hate to say it like I was telling you. My whole well-being is like, <laughs> dude, I'm telling down. you, man. Telling and it's you. like, and it's, and it's like we were discussing how they were so good so early, and it was like, oh yeah, this is, you know, yep. you know, you wanted to be like, oh, this is a World Series team, and now it's not. It's crazy. Yeah, like I remember last year, um, very much throughout the season, I was like dependent. My mood was dependent. On how yeah. they perform. And yeah. so when they were like slumping, which was the majority of the year, I like took a big break midsummer from the podcast because I'm like, I just can't yeah. have this negative energy. Yeah. And, and it kind of yeah. helped. Like at the start of this season, they didn't really affect my mood. But, you know, when you're winning five out of every six games, that, that helps. But, you know, yeah. 
lately, it's just it's starting to happen again. Like they lost the other night, and I'm just going through the next day. I'm like I'm just dragging through work, and I'm like, oh, you know what it is? It's it's the Yankees. It's like I shouldn't be dragging through work on a Thursday. It's not a Monday. It's it's the Yankees. I know. I know. It's it's like I said. I hate to say it. I wish they didn't affect my, yeah. my mood. But That's just part of being a New York fan, man. <laughs> That's just it. Yep. Yep. But how do you how do you feel about the team right now? What do you think? I, what what do you think's going on? What do you think we got to do? What do you think has 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 been a factor to this kind of? I, I don't want to say collapse yet, but yeah. almost collapse. What do you think? What's the state of the team? Yeah, there, it's it's like there's so many things you could point to. Um, you know, the order right now is that's that's not a championship order, especially where, where uh, some of the guys who should be playing better aren't playing better. You know, you look at it just going down the line. DJ has had has had a bounce back year, is being a lot more consistent, being good. Um, Judge, obviously, phenomenal season. Um, right there in the lineup, I have never liked Judge batting second. And when they brought Benintendi over, I thought second is a great spot for him. Judge offers protection to him. He's going to see more better pitches. Um, and the guy was, was, you know, great on base percentage, um, you know, hitting for average lately. Late, um, I don't know if he was leading the league in hits, but he was, he was up there. And then he comes to the Yankees and he's – batting sixth he's batting I don't know they maybe the highest up they batted him was third um so number one I don't like this order and once you get past DJ and Judge they've been doing lately you know Donaldson Torres um Rizzo is finally back um so he is at the top of the order um but after that you have this middle of the lineup that is just not producing anything. And then you get to the end with like Trevino, IKF. Those guys are more consistent than guys like Hicks, Torres, Donaldson. Um, it's just like a black hole of outs from those guys. Um, so yeah. I think that, you know, I think they missed Stanton. He yeah. is a, was a, you know, he was a major force in that lineup when uh, Yankees were playing really well. Um, obviously the pitching, the pitching uh, between injuries and just, guys not performing the way they were earlier in the season. Um, the relief, uh, you know, Michael King going down, that was a big blow. Yankees send down Ron Marinaccio. They, I don't even know if I pronounced his name right, but um, he should be up. It's it's like, what, do you, what are they doing there? I think they're keeping him down because of the August 20th call up and then I don't even know enough about that, but he gets another year of being controlled or whatever that is. But that's that's like the Yankee way now. It's like, let's try and like preserve all these guys so we could control them longer. Um, and it's like, you're, you're sitting pat at now, what, 10 games up. I don't know what Toronto did last night, but you can't, you, you gotta go full steam. You know, you, you can't like all relax now, you know? Nothing is over, no. and as you as you can always see historically, the best teams when it comes to October are the ones who are playing the best after the All Star break. And they did a statistic yesterday where the Yankees are over the last month. I think only the Tigers were worse than the Yankees <laughs> in the entire league. Like Christ. it's just it's 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 maddening, especially oh. from the way they started. So. Those are those are the reasons I probably could think of a few more, but that's oh, yeah. the bulk of them there. Oh, yeah. No, I mean you're right. And you know, from what you were saying a couple of minutes earlier about the lineup, like I've told you this before, it's funny, but it's not really a coincidence that the most consistent guys in the order are the guys who've been in the same spots all year. When you talk about DJ, for the you know, 90% of the season, he's been at leadoff. Same thing with yeah. Judge. I don't like him too, but hitting in the same spot, regardless, yeah. does yeah. keep a consistent mindset. You know where you're going to hit. Yep. Judge has been their most consistent hitter. And then at the bottom of the order, like you were saying, uh, IKF and Trevino, those guys have most of the time hit eight and nine, right? And they've been pretty right. consistent with the bat. 
So I, you would think that their manager would realize that, huh, four eighths of this lineup is hitting in the same spot and those guys are producing. Maybe I should get the other four guys in there or five, whatever, in one spot. You know, maybe I shouldn't bat Glaber Torres at cleanup all the time when he's clearly pressing and taking full hacks at pitches out of the zone. Maybe mm-hmm. I shouldn't continue to play Donaldson and Hicks when they're clearly not performing. Maybe I should, you know, what happened to like earning your playing time, right? If two guys aren't getting it done, I just feel like, all right, let's do the next man up thing. It doesn't always have to right. be an injury right. to get you onto the bench. You got to be able to produce. And kind of like you were just saying, the whole service time thing is frustrating because a lot of us want to see some of the kids get called up. Peraza, they're waiting for mm-hmm. his – they're obviously doing the service time thing with him. Um, guys like Schmidt and Marinaccio for the bullpen, they were mm-hmm. doing so good. Um, but they were sent down because uh, options and stuff. You know, you don't want to DFA guys like Licky and Abreu because they don't have options. But guys like Schmidt and Marinaccio have performed way better than them. Right. It's right. just nothing's really being done to benefit this team right now when I feel like that should be the focus. And then the rotation, I don't know. What do you think about the rotation? I don't think we've talked about that yet. But like Garrett Cole, uh, from him down to – Severino to Tyo. What do you think if you go one by one there? Yeah. Cole is has been disappointing this year. Um, you know, everybody still wants to call him an ace, an ace, an ace, but you know, his performance isn't showing that he's an ace. You know, he can grit things out after his um, you know, against the Mariners. What was that? How many home runs given up in the first inning? Jesus. Was four? I, dude, um, I was at, I was on the bus on the way to work and I kept getting notification out of notification. I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> it's batting practice. Yeah. Yeah. That to me, like, okay, maybe two home runs. You're like, okay, that's a blip. Uh, but that's, that's too many. He, you know, he yeah. has shown that he can beat mediocre teams really well. And then all of a sudden everyone points to it and is like, Oh, look what he did against, you know, uh, a really bad team. But, you know, you got to start playing. You got to start performing better against the good teams. And Seattle has been a really good team in the second half. And they just, they just batted him around. Um, Nestor has been, uh, you know, has had, drop off from earlier in the year he was just so outstanding um so you kind of you know who, nobody knew uh what was going to happen with him um but you know you, you expect a little drop off uh he stayed consistent though he, he's, he's you know, back on had, track he's good yeah, yeah yeah he's probably been the most dependable um you know we could well uh, I'll, I'll go into the the regular the who's still around um but Severino going down, that's a big blow. And then, you know, mm-hmm. some people think that he's going to make it back by September. But then it's still a, it's a question mark, you know. What's he going to be in September? Mm-hmm. You can't think that he's coming back full strength and all of a sudden is going to be the savior of this rotation. I hope he is, but can't count on that. Uh, Herman now is in the rotation and shows some, some bright spots here and there. Um, started off terribly. I was like, oh, my goodness. Um, I still would rather see Schmidt in there over Herman, but we'll see. Maybe Herman is going to, you know, keep getting progressively better. Uh, Tyone is just, I feel like he's been, well, he had a good outing in Seattle, um, but not saying, that's, that's not really saying much because he has had a major drop off and, you know, at least that was a, a good sign of him getting back on track, I hope. But, you know, you're still talking about a guy who historically has been a, a, a mediocre pitcher. Yes. Um, and then and now you get rid of Jordan Montgomery and start hearing all the news that they were trying to get. Uh, who is it? Lopez from Miami. They were going to get um, a guy from Detroit who actually just went on the IL with shoulder issues. So mm-hmm. thankfully that one didn't work out. Um, lost Castillo. And you get Montas, who was horrible his first outing. And is he, I think he's pitching today, right? He, 
he threw yesterday actually oh no I, yeah you're oh that's right that's right it was pretty um, which like i said i didn't get to see the whole game but yeah um you tell me i guess he pitched well yesterday he was okay yeah he was fine um yeah yeah no man it's you know with the rotation i i think you look at it this way i think earlier in the year you had five guys performing way above their expectation so the way i was I, you know i've kind of brought this up before a lot of guys were, like, if you look at their track records, it says that they were never as good as they were doing in the first two and a half, three months, whatever it was. Like, right. Tyone right. was pitching like a Cy Young candidate. You know, Nestor Cortez yeah. was pitching yeah. like the Cy Young front runner. <laughs> um, yes. You had, you know, every, I think at one point, every single of their five starting pitchers had an ERA below three, yeah. which is like the benchmark yeah. for ace. And... That was never going to happen. That's impo- incredibly hard to do. Um, so right. there was some regression due regardless. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think now you're starting to see, like you said, guys just come back down to earth. Tyone, he's always been a pretty average major league pitcher. He's starting to pitch like a pretty average major league pitcher. Uh, Cortez, right. I, I'm fine with. I think he'll be good. Um, uh, Cole, I mean, I think the, the what the Yankees do in the playoffs is obviously going to start with that. He has got to figure it out. He's got maybe eight starts left in the regular season, I want to say. And, I mean, he he has to he has to prove it to Yankees fans um, to give us some confidence entering October. So I, I think he's a big question mark. What he's done has been good, but not really anything beyond that. So, right. and then Severino, I don't know what – I don't know what we're going to do there. I mean – He's pitched good. He he was pitching well when he was healthy. They say he's due mm-hmm. due back in September, mid September. Are they right. going to use him out of right. bullpen? Ah, oh, yeah. Jesus, I don't know. You only need four <laughs> starters. Um, the Montgomery thing was questionable, but I'm fine with Herman to ride out the rest of the regular season. It's fine because he's not going to pitch in October. So you figure when you get there, it's going to be Cole, Cortez, uh, Montas, and one of Severino if he's healthy enough or Tyone. So oh, right. Right. Yeah. I'm just gonna try one thing with this lighting. That's fine. <laughs> Let's see if this works. Maybe it was too backlit. There we go. That's a little bit better. Um yeah, it, a lot of question marks. And like you said, if the playoffs start tomorrow, it's gonna be, you know they're throwing Garrett Cole first, um, yeah. which uh, we'll we'll see. Might not be the best thing. Um, uh, Cortez and Montas, and and yeah, maybe you see who is pitching well uh, the rest of the way. Whether Schmidt uh, comes up and they put him in the rotation, or Herman or Tyone. But you know, not not feeling great. <laughs> you know, it's frustrating, man. Um, like we've been talking about this team needing a jolt. And calling up players, it's like the jolt was supposed to be the trade deadline, you yeah. know. And um, I, I have faith in, in Ben Attendee. I think he'll be good. I think I'll start yeah. hitting. He's shown signs lately. Um, Montes, I think, will be a good number two, number three. Um, but man, it just it, Luis Castillo was available. He was clearly the number one guy to get. If you got him, would have made me so much more comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. With with um, this team going forward, like that to me would have took the Yankees and put them right at Houston's level. You know, I feel yeah. like yeah, it was a it could have been like an A plus deadline. Now it you know it's like a B plus solid solid deadline, but has, missing on the Castillo at Castillo and and you know the fact that we didn't trade any really big prospects and we're still not calling some of them up. They're just, it's, it's like, what are we, what are we really doing? Yeah. Yeah. And you hear about the Castillo deal and supposedly Jason Dominguez was offered in that. And was it Glaber? I can't remember if Glaber was one of the people in there too. And somebody else. And obviously Seattle got it because they gave their three of their top five prospects um, which, you know, I would love to know the more the particulars on who Yankees offered because 
it seems to me in a lot of the deals that didn't go through, people wanted uh, Volpe as part of the deal. And it's, you know, man, when he finally does come up, that guy's got a lot of pressure on him. He, he awesome, better be man. the next coming of Derek Jeter for, yeah. for me to look back on this and say, okay, I'm glad you kept him. <laughs> but that's some big shoes to fill. That's that's what I'm saying. Like you gotta like you're putting more pressure on these prospects by by holding them, holding on to them, and not going after these top names. It's like, yeah. So like this is this is the team we're gonna ride with. So, I mean, Cashman, a lot of pressure is on him. I think I think mm-hmm. and Boone, I, I think if they don't go out there this this fall and at least make it there make it to the classic i think you scrap it i think you do i think you call it you call it a you tried you tried putting something together you know kind of started this whole thing back in 2017 and Mm -hmm. if it if it doesn't work man i think you scrap it You, you get rid of who you can get rid of try to clear some of these contracts and yeah you got it Fire star cash has got to go. Boone's got to go. I think you do it. I think if you don't win the World Series or if you don't at least make it and show that there's some promise, you yeah. have to scrap. Yeah. Studio sixty nine Productions is a podcast production agency created by Leo Rodriguez to allow content creators to market their podcast. It's an online platform that will market your podcast or any other project that you're working on. Get in touch with Leo Rodriguez from Studio 69 Productions. You can find Studio 69 Productions on Instagram at Studio69NJ. Studio 69 Productions, where dreams are heard and born. I agree. It's like, you know, Cashman... He has had his moments of greatness and he has been, you know, overall, I think a great GM, but you got to mix it up. Somehow you got to mix it up. It's like same old, same old, and they're not doing anything really to, to mix it up the way they should. And Boone has to go too. you know, that I, I know like uh, everybody says he's the yes man. He's the lackey yeah. of the Yankees, but it's not working. And you, you really have to consider if Hal Steinbrenner is just saying, you know, we're, we're really good. I don't know if it was you that I was reading or someone else who brought up uh, points about how he just wants to sell out Yankee Stadium and make mm-hmm. it to the playoffs. And that's good enough because it's profitable. Yeah. So uh, that's what he's looking at. And it's not that is definitely not the Yankee way of world series or bust. And you do anything possible to do it. But I agree with you. You got to shake things up, get rid of people, call up these guys, um, these prospects and, you know, maybe have them just figure it out uh, along the way and see what happens, really put them out there. Um, Although I know they talk about these guys being brought up and maybe it's not, not the right time for them to be brought up. And then mentally it gets in their head. I don't know enough about that. It's like, if that's the case, then maybe you just can't, aren't going to hack it no matter what. Um, it's, it's, it's crazy. I guess I compare all of these prospects to uh, Derek Jeter because just finished watching the captain and, you know, they brought him up and they said, okay, this is, you know, this is your position. You're, you're playing. And he was, I forget how old he was at that point. Um and he obviously went on to, to be great. And uh, you want to, you know, you, he's kind of like the, the measuring stick of all these pro- yeah. prospects and how they can come up and what they can do, which isn't fair because, you know, he's, he's, he's Derek Jeter. <laughs> there is only yeah. one and, uh, you know, obviously one of the greatest players of all time. But it's, it's just frustrating. It is frustrating. And the way they started out this year, if, if it's like you said, not a world series appearance, then heads should roll. (laughs) Yeah. Do you think Hal can name five Yankees? (laughs) 
Um, I think, think so. over under on that. I'm so good yeah. with under overs. I go four. <laughs> maybe, maybe five and maybe five and a half. You'd get like a last name, but couldn't remember something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm that guy. Um, uh, yeah, man, it's it's. Was it you who was talking to me the other day about uh, how they should hire Jeter as like a scout? Because he's he can I don't know if it, I, I think I read it somewhere. No, it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't with me, but I think that's because he's like idea. a good evaluator of like winning players. You know what yeah. I mean? Like he would know who has that drive. And I feel like I don't think he's ever going to get a job in the organization. I think he's made that clear. I don't think he has a great relationship with Cashman, but yeah, man, that would have been cool. But um, yeah, if yeah. if yeah, I think down the stretch it, it's going to depend on. Garrett Cole being Garrett Cole um, and Montas performing up to his expectation. Um, and then hopefully, you know, we can get a couple guys just, you know, Cortez continuing his thing. It's going to depend on Garrett Cole in the rotation. Um, I think the bullpen has to get it together. I don't trust many guys in the bullpen right now. Um, Holmes, it's going to be Cole. Has to get it together. It's going to be Clay Holmes who has to figure out the closing role because I do not want to see Chapman back in that spot. If Chapman ends up closing again, I think we are screwed. Um, he's been pitching better lately, but I don't trust him. Um, so yeah. he Clay Holmes has to get it together. And then when you go to the lineup, they're, they're just hot and cold. It's a hot and cold lineup. We've seen them you know, have the same structure, the same style same philosophy over the last five years or so where they're going to home run, they're going to you know, strike out and they're not going to hit a ton of singles, doubles, which I think part of the reason they got Ben Intendi is because they want more of that consistency, more of guys who can hit singles and doubles and stuff. Right. So I think he'll be key. So I think my, my three key players down the stretch from the bullpen rotation and lineup is going to be Cole, Holmes and uh, Ben Intendi. So if I'm to ask you, Greg, three guys that you're looking at from each, you know, rotation, bullpen, and lineup, key pieces to to their success down the stretch here and going into October, who are you taking? Yeah, well, I'll go. I'll just go different because I would right, I would you, agree you on you. A big different, whatever you want to do. Yeah, well, I'll just just to be different. We'll we'll get some other names out All there. Right. Um, I will say Rizzo. In the lineup, he I think is really key. If he can get hot, I you know I love the way he has such great leadership qualities. And when he's hitting, I feel like he's in a good mood. He's getting everybody else fired up, um, and I just think he's a key piece to that lineup. And I would love to. I would love love to even see him in the in the two spot because yes. I would love to see. I don't know. I just I'm I'm such a big fan of what Joe Torre used to do in the lineups with righty lefty righty and you know he had the players to do that and switch hitters like Bernie Williams in there that he could he could throw in there. Um, it just balances the lineup, keeps a pitcher, um, you know. Uh, not off their game, but like they gotta, you gotta think if you're just seeing righties, um, it's, it's different than seeing a righty than a lefty than yeah. another righty. And it just, it just really drives the, um, the offense in a great way. So I'd love to see Rizzo in the two spot getting better pitches because he's got protection from judge. And uh, you know, the guy has been performing really well this year. Um, all those home runs with with my my over under of fifteen. He's well. He's surpassed that. Like yeah. crazy. So I think he's a really big key. Um, in the bullpen, I would have to say. Hey, fellas! I've noticed that only a small percentage of you who watch BD4 on YouTube are actually subscribed. So if you do enjoy this podcast and want to be alerted every time a new episode drops, consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell. This way, we can help the podcast grow, and you won't miss a single episode of BD4. Uh, you know, speaking of the bullpen, I, I don't know if he'll be a big key, but I really, what you and you po really pointed out and made me relook at uh, Efros last night when yeah. he got that out, and he was going crazy. I love <laughs> his energy, man. 
It is awesome. It is awesome. And I, I love the fact that, you know, he went into Fenway Park and got that save. You know, it wasn't easy. Obviously, it wasn't a clean uh, inning, but he gritted it out, got that, uh, got that final pop up, and Yankees go on to win. So, I, you know, I'm trying to look at some of the guys in the bullpen, and I'll just pick him because he's kind of a, a question mark. You know, they, they, line, they, they kind of compared him to King, uh, and they have real similar numbers, and I just think he, he could be and is a major part of that bullpen, especially after they went to him last night. So I think he's a key. And I think Nestor is another guy. I think he, even though he has been consistent um, and so pretty solid, I think he's another key and needs to go out there and pitch like a number one ace, like he was doing earlier in the season and finish out the season strong and go into the playoffs and throw a shutout. So those are my three key guys. I like that, actually. Doesn't always have to be guys who are struggling. It can be guys who are doing well, but need to keep doing well for down the stretch. Yeah. Um, Although, you know, I probably would have, since I was going different um, and went with Nestor, I agree with you with Cole. You know, you one know. of the most frustrating things with him, I think that a lot of Yankee fans feel, is that he's getting paid $36 million right. a season. Right. And you just expect him to go out there and win – 20 games, you know, be like 20 and five and yeah. Yeah. just, you know, beat all, beat Houston, beat Boston, beat all these rivals and go into the playoffs and have a lot of confidence with him as in, oh, you know, game one, he's pitching. It's a win. You know, the, that's what we want. We want to have that confidence, but he's not, he doesn't give us that confidence. Yeah. No. Um, do you remember like the days when pitchers used to win 20 games all the time? I feel like we don't get that anymore. 20 wins no. used to be like the thing. Yeah, Sabathia yeah. used to be right there all the time. Yeah, and now it's like 18 has mm -hmm. become that benchmark. Like if it's like, it's like, like oh, wow, 18 yeah. wins. But yeah, 20 was always the gold standard. Um, it was fun. And I think last year, I think, I think Cole had 18. I don't know who – I can't remember who won the Cy Young last year. And I don't, I'm not even sure if they had 20 wins. Um, but yeah, it's, it's interesting about about the 20 game setting the bar and it, no. it it doesn't happen right i got one more question for you and this is the most important question of the show uh -oh. how many home runs is judge gonna finish with wow man so he's at what 46 now right yeah. 46 uh you know we got those 100 rbis too yes. fastest yankee to get to uh 100 rbis but, man, 46, so we've got four, I think the season goes till October 5th uh, this year. I think I just read that. So That's there's great. like another week in October, you know, four, it should be four in September, four, five, six, seven. So we got like seven weeks, I think, left That's of a, yeah, it's almost the regular season. So let's say he's going to average... Oh, Two home runs a week and huh. extra 14. What does that give him? 60. 46 plus 50. Right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. There's my prediction. No way. I'm going to say he's going to go on a little bit more of a tear and he's going to get the AL home run record at 62. Okay. Why not? Let's go wow. crazy. <laughs> All right. I like that. I like that. I'm going to take what many might think is the glass half empty approach. Technically, it's the glass half full approach because I want to be surprised. So I'm going to say 59 just to temper my expectations. <laughs> this way, when he does get past that, I'll be like, wow, that was awesome. <laughs> but the way I look at it is half there you full. Go. People are going to call me pessimistic. Yeah. Technically, it's optimistic because I'm looking at it that way. But I'm going to say 59 point. just because of that. Yeah. Um, okay. But no, yeah, he's having he's having a crazy year, man. And, and you know, we'll see how much money he's going to get. He's hurting – the Yankees, every time he hits a home run, I could see Hal clutch his wallet. Uh, oh, my gosh. But, um, yeah, man, thank you. Yeah. Uh, so I, I like yeah. it. I like it. I like it. It's hopefully – hopefully we figure something out. Uh, we need to start winning. It's been pretty rough for about almost two months now. But, um, yeah, if, if their worst stretch 
is a 500 stretch from you know mid June to now. I think we'll be okay. Hopefully, I don't know. I'm trying to stay optimistic, um, but yeah. I mean it has to start now, man. We can't we can't keep doing this for much longer. It really has to start right now. They got to get it together because I'm not feeling too confident. But um, this this has to be it. Take the series today and start a win streak and, and yes. show us some optimism to close out the season here. Yeah, gotta gotta get hot. Gotta get hot for September at a very at the minimum, uh, you know and like like people have pointed out, some of the other teams like uh, Toronto hasn't taken advantage of the Yankees. No, we're fortunate in the, there. In the fall, yeah. Because if they had and they were hot and it was like, let's say, a, a, a four-game lead right now, that's, that's a lot of pressure. That's a lot of pressure. And, you know, we say, oh, they got to figure it out. Um, but, you know. Are they going to? How are they going to figure it out? A guy is just going to miraculously do something? I don't know. Uh, you know, it's it's a lot of question marks. Uh, but you know, hopefully, this August twentieth date of being able to bring guys up, um, which I'm yeah. pretty sure that's what it is. I think the August twentieth. Um, think so. Maybe that's the shakeup, and you got to do things. Uh, yeah. You know, I don't know exactly what you do to shake things up. Um, but I don't know. It's question marks, and maybe that maybe this guy Bader, who they got, can be. That guy. Yeah, maybe all of a sudden he can be a key to center field, and Hicks doesn't play, and that's a really good outfield if this guy performs the way everybody thinks he's going to perform. And I guess he's, you know, everybody's calling him an elite center fielder. He won yeah. Gold Glove last year. If he can come in, and you got that defense of Judge and right, Bader center, and Benintendi and left. That's a great defensive outfield. I love that. You know, oh, yeah. so maybe he becomes what's going to happen to shake it up. But he's got to come back from this uh, plantar, whatever, however you yeah. pronounce that, fasciitis. Yeah. Um, and, and, and be good. <laughs> and that's, that's a big expectation for a guy who is coming onto the team automatically on the IL and then all of a sudden you say oh yeah by the way <laughs> get into yeah. this playoff race and be a be a determining factor uh, of of a positive um help for the team you know it's tricky yeah we'll see I I think the division's fine I'm not too concerned about that it's the home field thing I'm worried about because yeah Houston yeah. now has that and we'll see um, yeah which is what a, a game and a half now is yeah, it's different? about a game and a half. Yep, it's a game and a half. But, um, yeah, it yeah. is. It, it is. You want to have you want to have home field advantage, and hopefully, if you're meeting Houston in the playoffs, you you want those games at Yankee Stadium. You want the extra games at Yankee Stadium, not in not in Houston, where it seems to be everything goes wrong for the Yankees there. <laughs> I I'm not scared. The, the Houston's the one team that scares the shit out of me every time I watch. The, it's just that yeah. Something about it, man. Just they're in our heads, and yeah, yeah. But we we gotta be careful. You know, we can't focus on them too much and not make it out of the first round. And then you know, I don't know. But um, hey, man, I appreciate you coming on, Greg. Yeah, dude. Anytime. Love it. We, uh, um, hopefully, the state of the team is a little better in a couple months. So I know. Hopefully, like you said, they turn it around, and I can start feeling better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to let it get to me. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just want to have live a happy life again. Now, and uh, we'll just say, see what happens, see what happens. And, um, you know, just hope because it was such a promising start to this year. <laughs> All right, man. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Rob. All right. So I hope you guys enjoyed that part of the show. That was Greg from Yankee Crazy Podcast and I discussing the Yankees, the state of the team, and what to expect going forward. And again, guys, I know it's not over yet. We got plenty of baseball to play. Things could happen that change, and, and you know it could get better. But we're seeing the same pattern that we've seen in recent years, so you can't blame the Yankees fan for being at least a little bit concerned. Guys, hope you enjoyed the show. That's it for episode 396 of BD4. Download this podcast wherever you can. Give us a five-star rating and review. Subscribe to the show, share it on social media, all that stuff to help us grow. This is it. Oh, this, is, this is it. Episode 396 of BD4. And I'll see you in the next one, guys. Thanks for tuning in. All right. Ciao.
This podcast is brought to you by Anchor. It's the best way to make a podcast. Download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm.